Hey y'all, today I'm going to show you how to European a, a, a pig skull. Uh, this method will work for any animal. Uh, I got an abundance of pigs, so we're going to start there today. Uh, just so we know, getting started, this is extremely graphic. It is not gross, it is just the reality. We're going to have to remove all the tissue and get it bright white. So here it is, step by step. If you're not into uh, watching the long-term preservation of animals, Please turn it off now. Don't be nasty. Don't make a dirty comment. This is how it works. And it's fantastic and beautiful when it's done. It's a great way to represent that particular animal. A couple of tools you're gonna need. I use a turkey fryer. This one came from Walmart, 40 bucks. Uh, you're gonna need some fuel, propane, or what have you to get it started. I use the same old rusty pair of channel locks I've used forever. This helps pull tusks, knock out uh, little nodules in the back. I use an extended set of forceps for pulling out the brain and pulling hot heads out of the pot. You need a way to start your fire and I use just a little straight slot screwdriver and I'll show you where all that comes into play. Outside of that some latex gloves and a sharp knife. I always use these little Havilon blades. Uh, it's just clean and fast and I haven't sharpened a knife in probably eight years. It's the answer. So hope you enjoy. Hopefully you learned something. And uh, thanks for watching. Here we go from the beginning. I like to just take and start my cut right up the center of the nose of that pig. I do the exact same thing on a deer, elk, antelope. It just gives me an even starting place. And I just peel around the edges. I'm going to do a lot of fast forward here so I don't lose you completely. If you've never skinned anything like this, just cut till your knife hits something hard and then cut the other direction. Super simple, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just cut, cut, cut. When you're skinning an animal to cape it or get it uh, taxidermy with the fur on, you wanna take as little meat as possible. It is the polar opposite when you're doing a euro. You want to take as much meat as possible. Anything you don't put in that pot, when I'm talking about the boil, uh, will just save you time and energy. So take everything you can off. That's why I take out this tongue and all this back head meat, if you will. Um, it's just stuff that I don't have to heat up and waste a bunch of time. I like to remove that jaw meat next cut it out and chuck it. Then I take that little back section of the skull and the eyes out. Get those out. There's no sense in heating those and trying to tear them out later. Just cut them out. They're super easy now. It'll just speed up the process. I also do my deer and antelope, pigs, everything. I do it in two pieces, the top of the head, obviously, and then the jaw. Uh, the best way to separate them on a pig, once you've got all this stuff out, is just run the blade right down the bottom of the jaw, just till it stops. On both sides, front and back, and then just uh, use the old Armstrong method. Just pull it apart. The tool that I forgot to mention in the very beginning that you're going to need is a power washer. Here's another angle, same exact thing. I'm going to do this whole thing fast forward just to give you another angle so you can see it one more time. I want to encourage you to use your local tax dermis whenever you can. This is something that I did on my own, kind of self-taught because I couldn't afford my own tax dermis. Um, and it just became a hobby, something I uh, enjoyed doing. I learned a lot about the animals by doing it. But if you got the means and you don't have a place to make the mess, I encourage you to send it to your local guy. I guarantee you're gonna get a great product back. If you're used to skinning these when they're in the rack, right down off the top of the head, that's perfectly fine. Uh, just keep in mind, you wanna take off as much meat as possible. I know I've already said it. Pretty good chance I'm gonna say it again, but uh, anything you don't put in there will just save you time. The next step here, we're going to plug in that power washer, 
connect the water up to it. You want to make sure you purge all the air out of that thing. Take your main hose, get that pot full right to the brim, then take your skulls, slide them in there, get ready for the boil. One of the products I really like to put in the uh, in the water I'm boiling in is this Arm and Hammer laundry detergent. For whatever reason, it's the best one I've ever used. It does a great job of degreasing, and it seems like it turns that meat into kind of like a jelly, and it takes it off way better. Most people ask me how long does it take start to finish to do a skull. It really varies on the skull, but I would just count on having that pig head in the boil at full rolling boil for at least 30 minutes. A deer full rolling boil maybe 20 minutes and then take it out and literally just power wash off the material. I do one sweep across the whole pig. I get off all the big major debris. Then I go through uh, the next step here where I'll show you I remove some pieces and parts. Then I put it back in the boil to get some of that tighter stuff. And so I almost always boil everything twice before I get to the finishing part. Now right on the inside of the jaw there where it connects, there's these two little nodules. I'm not even sure what they're called, but a bunch of tissue grows in and around those nodules and it's super important that those come out you just cannot get it clean with them in there. So I pop them out and then poke little holes with the uh, screwdriver and then wash it out. All the front teeth come out of the pig, both on the top and the bottom. The molars and incisors, they wind up staying, but everything else comes out. It's real important to get clean in there. The other stuff is really just built into the skull and there's not a bunch of debris there. Pop out those little nerve endings it's important for the teeth to come out because there's so much stuff in there that you want you don't want it to create an odor or uh, discoloration due to something in there. Pull your bottom tusks, your cutters if you will. And then I pull all those bottom lower teeth, the fronts. Always easier to get these teeth out when it's piping hot. So before you start washing, if you're gonna pull teeth, pull it right out of the pot and get it. That bone is uh, just a bit softer. Next step is this nasal cavity and it can make for a good day or a bad day. That was a good day. Everything comes out in one piece. I personally don't like any of the nasal tissue or anything to be left in a skull, deer, elk, antelope, or otherwise. But if you can get it to come out like that, it creates a real nice finished product. Next step in the cleaning process is you need to get that brain out. I don't spend a whole bunch of time doing anything until I've got those little nodules broke out and everything's gone and I let it boil down and it will literally come out in one big sleeve. And anything I can take out um, in bulk like that nasal cavity or the brain just makes a lot easier. And I just sweep up the mess, parts and pieces. Now everything is completely clean and for the most part it's degrease. I'm going to put it in, in another pot in what I call the color. This is 40% by volume liquid peroxide. You can use cream but it tends to boil up and foam. I just fill that pot and again bring it to a full rolling boil. I throw a teeth in the little strainer, stick it in the pot. Once it's boiled, I pull it out and I just give everything a real good final rinse. This will take any little tiny debris or anything you couldn't get off. Once it's boiled in that peroxide, it'll just come right off. Make sure you're getting in all those little orifices, any place something can grow. And then I just hang them up to dry. Next, especially with pigs, you need to fill the bottom tusks. For years I shipped them out just as is, uh, and after a while they would split. I didn't realize they even did that, so I fill them with a uh, 
with just a one part resin. This is made by Loctite. It's like a gel glue and I fill them all the way to the rim so they don't split and break um, in time. Then it's just a matter of putting everything back together. Putting teeth in holes. Remember all these teeth, jaws and heads, everything's kind of ring and pinion. It goes together just right. If it doesn't look like you put it together right, you put it together wrong. So it's harder the more pigs you have. If you're doing one at a time, it's pretty straightforward, but if you're having to fight putting teeth back in, then you got them in the wrong spot. The last step I take once everything is completely dry is I give it a coat with mop and glow. Just regular old flooring mop and glow. It's got a light lanolin smell, but it seals in that porous bone keeps the dust from settling in on it and it's just a real real nice way to do it uh, you can see how they're wet here it doesn't have much of a sheen at all when it's dry if you let it dry and put another coat on you can make them very very glossy so it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish you can see that both of these skulls here have been mop and glowed the night before then I slide the bottom tusks in I leave them loose because a lot of people like to pull them out and exaggerate them I do. If I could pull deer horns out and exaggerate them, I would do that too. But that is exactly what that pig's tooth looks like, so I don't think it should have to be tucked all the way in. It's not like we're creating a false tusk. Slide everything together and put it on your shelf. Hopefully it works good for you. Thanks for watching.